Hello, I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube, an IBM business partner. Thanks very much for joining us as we track severe tropical cyclone Jasper. It is now category four, it took about 12 hours longer than the Bureau of Meteorology um, had originally said. And I think that's due to this big block here of high pressure, which is extending all the way up into the Coral Sea and is helping keep the storm just a little bit unusual. Has a bit of an uh, unusual shape to it at the moment, although it has become a lot better organized as we go through Friday. It's sort of getting a better shape to it and that eye in the middle starting to become a lot clearer. But the high in the Tasman is the guiding force for this storm. So here is the past 24, sorry, past 12 hours and you know, quite explosive clouds in the middle portion of it here as it moves away from Honiara and the Solomon Islands. So as it moves away from the islands, it does have more open waters, so it grows. It's likely to peak today in strength. Originally this week we were saying it might have been this weekend, but it looks as though it's probably going to occur today, tonight, maybe into Saturday as well. Surf's up. We've got a lot of surfers asking us on YouTube about this one. Uh, the areas in green basically showing you where, where surf's pretty good, in the pale green I should say. Darker green much more concerning and obviously the yellow. Um, you'll have to use your local guide for swell wave heights on the beaches that you like to go to. And of course our usual disclaimer, please follow the advice of local authorities, etc. because uh, there might be some beaches that are closed coming up in the days ahead. All right, Saturday. Here is the storm out at sea, pretty deep, pretty strong uh, storm system. Along the coastline though, just a few light showers, nothing too major in there with that southeasterly breeze blowing through. On Sunday, out at sea, perhaps starting to weaken a little bit, but again, really it makes no difference to you on land because it's not going to be impacting the land quite so much here on Sunday. It's still just those uh, waves and swells starting to pick up along the beaches here as we go through the weekend. So I do think they, they might sort of be starting to put some of the signs up around the beaches as they become more dangerous. Now by Monday, the storm's weakening a little bit. A lot of the guidance and the modeling does suggest that. So it peaks about now, it starts to weaken again next week. It might go right back down to a category one or two storm. However, it, it's got a lot of moisture packed into this system and it's slow moving. So sometimes a tropical cyclone, as you guys well know in the north of uh, Australia, it's not always about the wind. Sometimes it's the rain, which can be fantastic for some of you inland, but for others nearer to the coastline, it can be a real problem. So we're not ready to lock in the rainfall next week, but you can see it's moving slowly. Just showed you a number of maps, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and it's only moved a little bit across uh, the ocean here. But you can see rain clouds, thunderstorms starting to line up around the edges here. So Wednesday, GFS modeling from America. For those who keep asking me, why do we not use Australia? They don't give us the maps this far out. And in New Zealand, they don't give us any maps. So we do use America and Europe. Those are the two main global ones. Um, and they are very good. They, they usually align at the last moment, and we're certainly starting to see that now. So Wednesday, looks like Cairns may well be in the firing line, along with Port Douglas, but really I think anywhere from um, Ingham northwards, Innisfail in particular, these areas should still be paying very close attention, and as well as Cooktown. Now this is the ECMWF model, the European one, and that's the American one there that we just showed you. Now, Every time I've done this this week, they have got much closer together. So we're starting to get what we call alignment. That's when the modeling starts to match. Now I just talked about the Australian modeling, um, even though it only goes out for a few days for us to use, it shows the storm actually going further out to sea to the north. So there is definitely you know, a little bit of confusion about where this is all going. But if you take a look at Thursday, that's the American model there and the European one here. So they are both already into Australia by Thursday. So that's uh, starting to get a little bit more in the alignment of where this might go. The further north it goes, the later in the week it will come in. That seems to be based on most of the modeling that I've looked at. Look, let's have a look now at uh, uh, the storm on the satellite map. You can really start to see the middle part of it deepening. That dark shading there around the edges, that means the clouds are going right up into the atmosphere. Very heavy rain and thunderstorms. But look, even the outer bands are not really affecting you yet. So it's a number of days away. We don't have an update on Saturday, but we are going to do a special update on Sunday for you in Queensland because 
a lot of you will be asking, what is going on? What has changed in the modeling? And of course, stay up to date with your local authorities. That is the Bureau of Meteorology across Australia. They are the official government warnings provider. And we do need to say that because we are not. That is all from me. Have a great weekend. Thanks for all the support on YouTube. We will see you again on Sunday with our next special update on severe tropical cyclone Jasper.